This is the last in a series of videos in which I've been developing a logic comparator. You've seen me uh, testing this and the original design and development. Um, I fully tested it now and it's working fine. All the channels work as they should. It's doing exactly what it was intended to do. For those of you not familiar with logic comparators, they're very straightforward. What you basically have is a reference card and this has a uh, reference device plugged into it. You then plug the logic comparator into the board that you're testing. Essentially what you do is you just clip the test clip onto the um, equivalent component on the unit under test that you want to test. Uh, and what you then do is run the unit under test and if any of the pins on the reference device are doing something different to the device that you have the test clip attached to on the unit under test, then the LED for the pins that are misbehaving will illuminate. And what it essentially means is that this device will allow you to do in circuit testing of a very wide variety of uh, ICs. And the advantage of doing in circuit testing is um, it's very extensive. There's a lot of, lot of advantages to doing that. Firstly, you don't need to remove the device from the board, uh, but there are other advantages that I'll come to in a few minutes. But uh, as I say, I've now completed the testing. I've been doing a lot of testing on different devices. So everything from standard logic uh, chips. And uh, the other point here is that, as I've mentioned previously, uh, you don't need one of these cards per type of device. Um, this card, for example, will cater for all these types and that's simply because the pinouts are fairly you know, standardized and that means you only need maybe five or ten cards for the majority of the work you'll be doing. There will be occasions when you'll need a card per device such as a shift register uh, which has a very specific pinout um, but even so if you want to uh, you can very easily change the jumper configurations and use the uh, card for something else. As long as you've used a socket on the card, it's very easy to change them. You can do uh, testing of 40 pin devices. So this is what I'm just in the process of configuring. Um, and it allows some testing of devices that would otherwise be very difficult to test. So here I was testing uh, a PIO and I'm just, uh, as I say, in the process of configuring the card. All the testing I've done so far has worked fine. The only time you're going to possibly encounter issues is on devices that may have uh, pins that can act as both inputs and outputs, and sort of bi-directional buffers, that sort of thing. You can still test them, but you need to be fairly careful about how you go about deciding which uh, pins you're going to treat as inputs and which you're going to treat as outputs. So, very flexible device. The way I've been using it is to create generic test leads. So I have here um, a 16-pin test lead and then I can plug it onto um, 8, 14 or 16 pin um, clip-on connectors. I've done a lot of um, testing with different types of connectors. I mentioned in a previous video that there's different types of these connectors, but there's also a lot of very cheap connectors on eBay. I uh, advise you steer clear of those. The best ones I've tested by far are this type. Um, I don't have any affiliation with the manufacturer, I don't get anything um, if you buy these, but these are the ones I recommend. They're knife edge type connectors, so they will work on ICs that maybe have a bit of corrosion on the pins, and they're supplied by a company called uh, Warwick Test Supplies. I will be providing a, um, a list of part numbers for different size and types of these clips uh, for anyone that buys a set of boards. But I've tested all different sizes right up to uh, the 40 pin size, which is the maximum that this uh, test unit will, uh, will work with, and it works fine. To make the test leads, I just use old IDE cables, um, crimp some connectors onto the end, and then use connectors that will plug onto the, uh, the test clip, and that way I can reuse both the test lead and the test clip um, for other things. They are quite expensive. Uh, but as I say, this is uh, quite a good uh, test clip. It's got a very nice spring, act, uh, spring action. It's not really tight like some are, um, but having knife edge 
pins means it will make very good connection to the um, uh, the device you're trying to test. Okay, so that's uh, what I recommend um, you use if you want to build one of these. If you are interested, these will be appearing on my website shortly, and I'll be providing them as a full set of boards. So that will be um, the display board, two um, comparator boards, and a set of five boards to get uh, you started. And these will be available uh, as one-offs if you want to buy one or two or five at a time, then uh, they'll be available separately. I'll also be um, providing a kit that only has one comparator board. As I mentioned previously, you don't need to build it with two comparator boards. Uh, you can start off with just one. It just means you'll be limited to uh, 20 pin devices that you can test. All the rest of the cards are the same. And then if you want to in future, you can just purchase uh, a second comparator card and just plug that onto the unit and it will then give you the full 40 pins. Uh, so as I say, they'll be on uh, my website uh, fairly shortly. For anyone that's used the old HP logic comparator, then obviously the main difference here is that this supports up to 40 pins, which gives it far more um, flexibility. You can do a lot of other things with this, such as testing DRAMs and this sort of thing. And in future videos, I will be going over different ways of using this. So if anyone does buy one, then um, by all means feedback any information that uh, you have from using it. Uh, but also keep an eye on the videos because I will be going over other uses for this. And as I say, it's not just limited to doing logic comparisons. You can do fairly in-depth testing with this. Um, but I will go over that in more detail um, of the coming videos. And I'll also be showing this quite a lot in repair videos because um, it will be obviously an extremely useful tool for doing that. Now, one thing I mentioned in a previous video is the power supply. On the old HP unit, it's used uh, jumpers on the um, module card to define which pins were power pins, and then it used the power coming through the test clip to power the logic comparator. Now, I haven't done that on this device, and the reason I haven't done that is just simply because of the number of channels this supports. With everything running, if all the LEDs were to come on and with a fairly a power-hungry device, such as a CPU in the tester, this could draw uh, over half an amp, and I didn't want to have half an amp being pulled from the unit under test. Uh, not all unit under test power supplies would withstand that, so I didn't want to introduce um, issues into the uh, unit under test by virtue of using this. So it's got an independent power supply. I may make an upgrade in the future that allows uh, a choice between using external power and the, um, uh, the jumper system. Uh, but at the moment, it only supports uh, external power. So that's it for this series of videos. If you're interested in one of these, then let me know. Uh, as I say, they'll be on my website and on eBay. I'll be providing a, a bill of materials. It'll be a generic bill of materials, so you'll have to um, figure out uh, what connectors to get hold of, depending on what's available to you and which particular uh, devices to use.